Let's see, Christian, you good? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Sean from Proco. We got Ryan Benjamin in the house. We've got Christian as well, whom you've probably seen <laughs> on many more streams. Uh, we're gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting. We're uh, <laughs> this whole event is for uh, our Ukraine aid. Uh, thing basically a bunch if you go to proco.com slash ukraine you can see a bunch of stuff you can buy or courses there's a lot a lot of people donating artwork and things like that and that will all those proceeds go to humanitarian efforts for refugees and things like that um ryan came into the studio he's gonna be drawing some awesome stuff what do you want what are you going to be doing today, Ryan? Um, so I am going to be doing some brand new character designs. Um, I have no idea what they're going to look like. <laughs> I'm just, I have a sense of it. Um, I have a brief description. I'm just going to read through it and just whatever pops in my head, that's, where we're, that's what's going to happen. Um, and you guys are going to see the full thing in action. So you love it to see. How I think, um, how I'm concepting, how I'm doing my my anatomy breakdowns, um, uh, and I'm gonna take it all the way to a, a fully inked piece. So, nice. so you'll see everything from pencils to inking. So short time, right? <laughs> yeah, we got two I, hours. I think <laughs> so, I can get it done in two hours. Yeah, if you if you got questions, you can ask us in the. I'm reading the chat. Yeah, he's reading the chat. Reading the chat. Um, yeah. yeah. Sure. So I'm going to get started on this. Um, I think I'm looking at a couple of different char characters right now. I'm just trying to see which ones I really want to work on. Yeah. So you've received some. Someone has asked you, hey, can you design these characters for us? Yeah. This is actually from uh, someone I know. <laughs> uh, um, and um, I'm actually, I, I have a description and I have a tiny little thumbnail, but it's the thumbnails now. <laughs> sorry Tom but the thumbnail <laughs> we're gonna make it the thumbnail awesome <laughs> make it amazing so yeah so I'm gonna make it look uh, pretty cool so I'm gonna keep it everything in like a comic book um, uh, format um, so you'll see I want to do all my breakdowns um, and eventually these are gonna be for cards so we'll, nice. see, what, we'll see what's gonna happen when these come out so um, all right, so I'm just going to get started. I think I have an idea. I'm going to send out a little message to let them know which one I'm going to work on. And that's... Yeah, we're, we're going to be... Uh, Ryan's drawing and we're using Clip Studio Paint today. Yes. yes. Um, okay, here we go. All right, so... Make sure my phone's off because I don't want anyone <laughs> calling me while I'm, while I'm working. Stop calling me. Everyone tries to call me every time. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, so one of the first things I like to do is make sure that my file is uh, correct. So the uh, image is 400 DPI, 16 by 12. That's okay. That's pretty good. So um, I'm just going to do my setup. Pages. So this is my pencil tool. Just making sure everything is good. So this one here is going to be the character. So the character's name is is called Horntail. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you guys a written description, um, so you can you can uh, follow along with me. Um, so he's very strong and super tough and resistant. So he has like like. Um, armor skin <laughs> like like a like a lizard ar ar armor mm. skin or something like that um uh, uh let's see yeah there we go so that's that's basically it that's the main <laughs> that's, that's the, the main basic, power that we're working a basic with description lizard like skin give you guys. armored um a tank. yeah so he's a tank he he has armor skin and he kind of looks he kind of looks like a like a like like a character you would play in, in a video game or something. So all right, so here we go. So I'm trying to get a feel of just a quick sense of where is his body going to land. Okay. 
I'm not concerned about um, details. I'm just more concerned about the energy. Where is he going to live on this page? I know he has a tail. Yeah, so he has a pretty fat tail, like a like a, a lizard type thing. All right, so kind of get a sense of that. I'm gonna knock that out of the background. Yeah, when you're starting a piece, do mm -hmm. you often start it out the same way each time, or do you kind of mix it up based on what you're working on? No, I typically start everything the same way. Mm -hmm. um, with these rough lines, um, these lines are just there. I'm I'm just looking for energy. I'm looking for how is this going to flow on the page. Mm -hmm. You know, that's literally what I'm looking for. Uh, and now when I so now I ha I I captured that energy that I'm initially looking for. Um, and, and I, I convert that layer into blue line. Now I'm just going to clean it up a little bit and then I'll clean it up even more. So I'm going to work in layers and in stages. Yeah, and if anybody has questions for Ryan, you can post them in the chat. I'll be reading them, sending them out. Uh, as far as making comics go, what do you think is the best medium? Ooh. I think it depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> Honestly, because um, for me, if you're, if, if you're asking me the question, I would probably um, say pencil and paper. Um, that's, that's something I would stick with because there's a, there's a back-end uh, market to it. So I would stick with that. If you're gonna go digital, some some people prefer to go 100% digital. Um, that's fine too. Um, but understand, you know, once it's in digital, the, pretty much the only thing you can do is just make prints out of it because you, you, you don't have an original piece. So there's not much you can do after that. Um, but I'm I'm kind of from the old school, so I mm -hmm. like to stick with uh, pencil and paper. As far as feel goes, do you have a preference? Do you prefer pencil and paper, like traditional to digital? As far as just the feel, no aftermarket sales <laughs> related things. Um, yeah, P the pencil and paper. There's a difference. There's a uh, there's a there's a brain eye connection that's completely different from from using like a Wacom and in a screen, and you have all these, you know, um, and the the proof to me <laughs> was. What uh, there was a time I was on, I was working on the computer so much. I was just constantly drawing and coloring and drawing and coloring, and then I actually picked up a pencil and paper and I tried to draw, and my left hand was trying to hit Control Z. When I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I have paper, pencil and paper. Why, why am I hitting con Control Z? So it's like I'm programmed to hit Control Z mm -hmm. constantly, and I'm trying to undo, and, and so that that's one of the, <laughs> the downfalls. Uh, you know, you can get pro programmed by Photoshop. Mm. <laughs> it just drives you nuts. <sighs> okay, so he has a lot of horns all over his body, so I'm just going to quickly scribble that. I know he has a fat tail. So I think I'm going to make it, just give him like a fat tail on the, like, I'm going to make it thick on the tip right here. I think I'm gonna do that. Almost like a uh, a tad tadpole type of feel. Mm. So I'm just making this up. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason. The only thing I have is a brief description, and that's it. So you guys are gonna see what's gonna come out of this in a minute. Uh, Lucky Ortiz is asking, uh, "Hey Ryan, can you help me? I want to know how do I design shapes and then build my 3D forms around them, or do I build my 3D forms and then design shapes?" Um, you can go both ways, honestly. Um, for me, um, I, 
I, I have when I when I'm concepting, it's already in my head. So I already it's already there. I'm just filling in the blanks. So I can go either way. So to me, if I'm starting with like just like large shapes, um, to me it's, it feels like um, I'm using clay and I'm just like kind of chiseling away at these at, at, at certain edges and just trying to get to the form that I'm looking for. Or if if I if I'm using going in the opposite direction, I can go that way too because it it's it's just basically you're just creating little dots and you're connecting the dots now. You know, that's kind of, that's how I look at it. Yeah. Um, so honestly, the best thing I would say is do what's comfortable to you because you're the artist and this is art. Art is is about freedom and expression. So you have to find the easiest path to express what's in your brain, what's in your mind. So if you're more comfortable working in one route, go go, go that route. If, if, not, if you're not, go in a, in a different direction. So the the ultimate goal is the end piece. What does that end piece look like? And will your client be happy, uh, or or your supervisor, or your art director, or, your, or whoever is supervising, whoever you're doing this for, are they going to be happy? You know, that's basically what you look out for. All right. So, from this rough squibble, I already know what I'm look I'm looking for. So I'm just going to go right into the detail. I have I have all the large areas I really need, like the hands, like even though it's a couple. There's a little circle like it. It doesn't matter because I already know how to draw hands. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So now I kind of have a, a, a sense of what where the, what the character is going to look like. So from here, it's just just go. Okay. So don't be surprised if I'm done with this in about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tell my editor I said that. So. <laughs> don't tell him. Don't tell him. Because that means he's going to want me to turn over pages like super fast. <laughs> So I'm going to give him like, you know, those snake eyes, like, like this. So I'm going to give him eyes like that. Mm. Something like that. Uh, Kirk Spencils is asking, uh, what's Kirk. the inspiration behind this? Um, the inspiration behind this, it's uh, it's a tiny little thumbnail. I don't want to show it to you because <laughs> I just don't want to show it to you. It's like really tiny, and it's this, it's almost like a stick figure. So it's just uh, it was sent to me and said, "Hey, kind of go in that direction." So they kind of gave me that, and then there's a brief dis written description. Um, I, it's on my phone. I can't really show it and show it to you guys. Um, so from 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 that description, it's just whatever pops in my head and my skills. So I'm just putting it on paper, and you guys are actually seeing the process of this. So it's like a stream of consciousness, kind of. Yeah. So I, w I wonder if I could tell him what what project this one is for. Let me let me let me find out if I I'm gonna I'm gonna find out if I can talk reveal. about <laughs> if I can reveal it if I can reveal it, I will tell you guys right now um, what project this is for. Yeah, he Ryan is act. This is an actual character design for an actual thing that's being made. All right, so. There's gonna be a lot of, um, okay, so you guys see the, the process I'm using here where I'm just kind of scribbling lines like this. So I'm gonna be doing, I'm going to keep I'm keeping this energy but I'm just going to go a little bit more cleaner with it and then I'm going to clean it up again um, actually I won't clean it up any because I'm going to move a little bit faster I'm just going to go straight from uh, the rough pencils immediately into inks and I'll, I'm going to do the cleanup process during the inking um, parts of this okay so I, I've been given uh, permission to actually say what this is for oh, cool so this is um, this is for uh, a, a board game uh, I am uh, in uh, I'm in the process of creating with um, um, with power entertainment and with um, um, rocket ship entertainment uh, it's called Stanley's Genesis so so this is uh, a, a part this is one of the characters out of the 200 that's being de developed for this uh, this board game and um, we're, we're going to be launching the Kickstarter for the launch game sometime around September. So you guys should like 
really just follow this and just keep an eye out because there's going to be around 200 characters that I'm designing for this. And you guys are actually seeing the process of one of them right now. So um, when you guys uh, get out there, just make sure you, you, you follow us on this one. Are you designing all 200 or are you one of several artists? All 200. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh man, my hands. Yeah. I draw so much. I draw too much. Oh man. Oh, you know what? I I, I wish I had my hotkey set up because I like there's a hotkey I like to work with. But you know what? It's okay. I don't need it. Okay. How much time a day do you usually spend drawing? Um, I'm drawing all day long. Every day, all day long. Before I got here, guess what I was doing? You're drawing. <laughs> exactly. Nice. All day, every day. Uh, Mirror Domains is asking, how much negative space is impacting the shape? Because I draw things proportionally sometimes, and it ends off the page. Oh, yeah, that happens a lot to me. Um, so what I like to do, let me, let me give you a quick breakdown of what to do. Um, when just So I'm just going to create a white layer and kind of lower the opacity so you can see what I'm talking about okay so that was one of, the, one of my biggest issues I would have I remember 20 15 years ago 10 years ago I, it was one of the issues I would have and I would have people come back and laugh at me ha 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 his, you're drawing it you know his hands was going off the page blah blah blah, blah. so I kind of learned to keep just, vi just somewhat visually um keep this mental image of the space around here around the edge of the page so you don't want to get too close to the edge of the page here so what i try to do is keep everything i'm doing in this core the main objects of whatever i'm drawing ends up here in this in this core and that could be the center body that could be the center body including the head it could be uh whatever it is so um, if it's a, if it's a, an extreme clo close up of a character holding like a weapon or something, I want it to end up somewhere here in the middle, you know. So, so I'm trying to to just keep aware of where this the center mass is, um, and where am I to the edge, to to, to this uh, the the safe margins, my fictitional, fictitional is that a word? Fictitious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Safe, safe margins and in the very edge right here where you don't want things to get too close to so you want to be aware of like say you're drawing a foot and then the toes kind of end up over here you know you're like okay well you only have a tiny space a little bit of space down, down here to to worry about but you know it might be an issue but it would be best if that foot kind of ends somewhere around here you know so you just want to keep aware of uh what you're doing um and the um the, the the you know the areas of, of the, the 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 parts of the body that's mm -hmm. uh, floating around and stuff like that. So just be careful. Like you see how I have this this tail coming close to the edge when I'm drawing. I I'm not. It's the tail's not that important because the main thing is is this character here. You know, and the tail. I'm not too concerned about it because at the end of the day, um um the edge of this page won't matter because we're going to be moving this character to wherever we're going to be putting it on websites and doing whatever else we're, we're going to be doing it might be on a box it might be a, you know because we eventually have to put this card this character on a on a card so at some point we might end up doing something like this like maybe moving the character uh is it even selected yeah it is selected just moving so we might end up scaling it like that you know we might end up doing a whole bunch of different things with it mm -hmm. so it really depends. All right, so I'm going to speed up a little bit because I want to be able to get this character done in a little bit of time. All right, so I'm just scribbling away. I'm probably going to end up um, moving this hand. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. So the, the process I use when I'm drawing um, is kind of um, like a patchwork type of feel. Um, I try and, I'm not even concerned about erasing too much. 
Um, so I, I usually just keep everything, like I switch between black and white like this. So I'm, as I'm drawing, I'm just drawing in black. And if I need to erase, I'll just quickly switch to white and just kind of scribble right on top of it. That's because I'm not too concerned about making it look too pretty. That's, a, uh, that's an issue here. Let's see if it clean. Yep, cleaned it up. Okay. Nice. See, that's one of the clips, uh, the, the tricks with Clip Studio. So you guys saw what was happening when I was drawing. My no matter what what I pressed, it was constantly mm -hmm. coming out with a, a strong line like that. So that's a RAM issue. So what I typically do is I just create a, a new pa a new page, and I'll scribble on right on top of it, and it kind of clears it, mm -hmm. and then I then I close it. And then I go back to drawing, and it's like a normal pencil all over again. Okay, so am I talking too much? I think. I'm oh no! Okay, you're, you're awesome. Okay, I'm awesome. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. I think I'm gonna make some a little. Give him a little. He's starting to look like something from Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I love Star Trek, though. Uh, Su Suyash was asking, uh, you know, you mentioned you draw a lot. Uh, yes, how I do you do. deal with burnout if you do get that? I, I, it's rare that I get burnt. Um, I, I've been burnt maybe twice wow. in my entire career, and I've been doing this for 28 years now. Wow. Um, and I've only been burnt twice. And the burnt that I had was pretty bad. Mm. <laughs> it's sort of, you know, how do you, if I, if, if it's rare that I get burnt, it must take a lot to get me burnt. Yeah. Uh, so this is how burnt I was. Um, I actually took a short vacation and I went to the Caribbean because I, I, I tell myself I need to get away from all this digital stuff, all the computers, all my art, and I just need to go sit on a beach and do, do absolutely nothing. And I went to this, I went on, on this like, I went to this hippie commune where you had to get in a, a Jeep and drive down a bumpy dirt road just to get to this place. And then when I got there, it was in the middle of this jungle. Um, you know, all the cabins were like tents. Um, and I just kind of, I just wanted to get away from technology. And as I'm sitting there and I went out to the beach and I'm sitting and my brain was still doing this like zzz, because that's how fried I was. I just couldn't think of anything. I was like, oh, I just need to relax for a little bit. It took about three days for me to just, you know, just get in touch with, with nature um, and just kind of get away from everything. No cell phone signal, nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. How do you go without Instagram, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah, pretty much. That's how it was for me. What does it take to get you burned out? Oh, man. <laughs> just um, what does it take to get me burnt? Um, probably, I think lack of sleep mm. and constant working. That's probably probably what I think that that that's what what did it for me. Mm. It was just I wasn't sleeping that much, and then I'm you know, just constantly just grinding. So, and this was like right after Comic Con because you know how many oh, yeah. times have you guys been to Comic Con? Comic Con is insane. Like yeah. it's, it's just. You, it's you, your senses get overwhelmed because mm -hmm. oh, there's so much stuff happening and I remember I'm thinking I have five days of this <laughs> I can do five days of this oh you know and so it took me about you know three days in and I'm almost like two more days two more days two more days and then eventually at the end of the as soon as comic-con left I immediately jumped on the plane and I think like, I'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> So that's the sense of it, okay? So uh, I'm already, I'm just doing a cleanup of the anatomy. Um, so I kind of get a sense. I have a stripe here, a stripe here, okay. All right, let me see. Um, let me see what I can see. All right, no more. I'm not going to look at my phone anymore. I'm just going to go off from the top of my dome. I'll put it down. Let's just go into it. Um, Elenette is asking, 
Ryan, uh, many manga digital artists mm. are using databases for hair, clothes, etc., and reuse them as much as possible mm -hmm. to, to save time. Mm -hmm. Do you have or use those kinds of databases in your creations? Um, I have a mental date database. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep track of things in my head. Um, uh, if if there's actually no. I wonder if they're, I'm assuming they're talking about like those stamps where you can yeah. like hair and it's just it, one it, brush. And I, I could see that if, yeah. we, if we're talking about starting off from, from like the, the, the middle part. So you're not worried about doing any layouts and you just want to get like the, the initial stages done and then you can go back over it and, and add more and mm -hmm. tweak things. Sure. Yeah. You know, that, that sounds great to me. Um, but for me, things need to, I, I, I don't want to feel like a robot and I don't want to do stamp and repeat and I'm not doing an animation, so I'm not too concerned about that. So I'm more about being original and just trying to, to, to just express what's in my brain and put it on paper, you know? So that's, um, that's my number one concern right now. I think I'm going to lower this a little. I'm going to move his hands. I don't want his hands to cover his. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise that a little bit. I don't want to cover his horns. So I'm gonna raise a little bit somewhere on there. And guess what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call it illustration for now. <laughs> Clip Studio. Who cares? I'll find it later. Okay. How often do you draw from reference versus straight uh, out of your head? Um, usually I'll reference if I absolutely need to. For the most part, a lot of this these just come straight off of the top of my head. Mm. Um, and you guys are going to see what I'm talking about. Because um, uh, after you've drawn an object 100 million times, it's like you don't need to reference it anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you just kind of go off and go, you know. So, you know, it's kind of like that. You know, like I was in, a, I was recently in a Italy and um, I went to see um, uh, Michelangelo's David. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here and I'm learning about the history of these things and I'm watching... Um, you know, looking at this, the statue, I'm looking at tons of different, you know, figures that has been sculpted and paintings and stuff like that. And come to find out, like, some of these artists were pretty young when they did these things. I'm like, they were like 22, 25 <laughs> when they were doing these masterpieces that we're looking at right now. It just blows my mind how incredible these artists were, you know. You know, so when I think about that and I think about, you know, the technology that we have today, we think about the techniques that we use today. Here we are. We're like, I feel like, you know, I'm cheating right now. <laughs> look, look how I'm moving a finger right now. I'm, I'm cheating. I'm literally cheating right now. <laughs> Michelangelo couldn't do this. <laughs> he didn't have to do this. You know, he didn't have Photoshop, Clip Studio. When you were early in your career as a student, did you use a lot of reference or? Yes, um, I used a lot of reference because um, I was trying to learn my game. I'm trying to, I was trying to do two, two things. I was trying to, to, to learn the, 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 the techniques of drawing comics. And at the same time, I was trying to learn who I am as an artist. So I was trying multiple uh, styles. I was trying... Um, just a ton of different um, techniques, um, a lot of different um, tools, and I kept kept doing that, kept playing around with it until I kind of get I got a sense of what I'm what I'm doing, where, where am I going with this? You know, what am I drawing? What am I drawing it for? You know, what what, what am I trying to tell in the story that I'm I'm, I'm drawing here? Because when you're drawing comics. Um, you, you're literally trying to tell a lot of story in one panel, you know. So now you have to think about the story. You have to think about um, um, 
the uh, you know the techniques that you're using you know the lighting effect everything you got to think about all these things and you have to do it constantly over and over every single day because mm-hmm. every day you have to be able to turn in a page or turn in a, 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 a story something you have to turn in especially on covers it can get intense you know so it takes some some time there are a lot of people who are out there drawing and they're trying to draw comics and you know um some some people might give up because they're not they're not really feeling it or they're not seeing any any forward movement. So it takes time. You're gonna have to go. Through, you're gonna go through a lot of trial and error. You're gonna go through a lot of testing and moving things around and making sure this is correct. Blah blah. blah. And you have an audience, so you're gonna have feedback that you you have to worry about. So so you're gonna be getting instructions from a lot of different avenues. So you have to factor all these things in as you're moving as you're moving forward. And and uh, you're always going to be your hardest critic, you know. Um, you know, so you're going to draw something, and you you might not like it, and you don't want anyone to see it. Nah, it might be great, or it might not be. You don't know. So, but you you won't know until you actually get some feedback. So, I would absolutely encourage you know showing your work more, uh, um, or showing your work to as many people as you can. Today, nowadays, we have what all these yeah, Instagram Instagrams <laughs> yeah. and all these different tools that anyone can just draw and you can post something immediately. Look at what we're doing right now. Yeah. You know, so it's it's constantly like this. You know. Um, yeah. All right. I make this guy kind of give him like a big big guy muscle. Um, so I'm just going to quickly scribble where his muscles are going to land. Uh, Jim P. Animation is asking, have you ever separated your layers for use in motion animated comics? I, yes, I have. I do it all the time. I just did it yesterday. Oh, nice. <laughs> I did it today. I did it, <laughs> I, I did it today. I was doing another character, and I had to do all the effects on one layer. I had to do um, the, the costume on another layer. I had to do certain parts on, on, on layers, so I'm constantly doing it That's every awesome. day. <laughs> oh, no, forget it, forget it. Um, no, I don't want to give him that foot. That foot. I don't want to, I'm going to give him the standard superhero foot or super <laughs> villain foot, you know, like this. Okay. So all these lines I'm throwing, they're kind of just to indicate where the muscles are going to land. Um, and they're not perfect. They're just... Like so, I can get a sense of what's gonna, what's where certain lines are, you know, and and this rough, this this rough type of drawing here that I'm doing, um, when I draw it rough like that, it gives me a little bit more flexibility when it comes to actually um, inking, so I don't have to, I don't have to be precise. Like I'm I'm not sitting here drawing the foot perfect like this or his calf perfect like this, and trying to get the muscles correct. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. I'm having fun. I'm just going to go on that and what comes out of it comes out of it. Uh, Arthur Enrique is asking, are you the one who designs the panels and pages or yes. does your editor? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who actually does all that. So yes. the editor just says yay or nay. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically it. And while you're drawing, I'm going to plug uh, the proco.com slash Ukraine again. That's what we're doing these streams for this whole week. Uh, we have more streams tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can just, if you want to help the refugees in Ukraine, or I guess out of Ukraine now a lot, um, there are a lot of, you can, there are courses you can buy. All that money goes to uh, several humanitarian uh I guess companies, I don't know, Red Cross kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have all those people listed on like where all that money goes as well. And yeah. there's like original art, there are mentorships, there's classes. If you want to buy a Proco course, you know, buy it through there and it, all that money goes to Ukraine aid that stuff as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, speaking of that, uh, when I was in Italy, I, um, I, I, I met a couple of Americans who were actually living in Germany now, mm. and 
um, one of them was telling me about, um, you know, he was out there walking his dog and this giant, like, like a greyhound bus or something, you know, pull up and, uh, uh, and they were letting a bunch of, uh, U- U- Ukrainians out mm-hmm. who were just coming in, you know, so there were a bunch of refugees who were coming in and you know, a couple, whole bunch of them were kids and they, they all ran over to him so they can pet his dog. Oh, wow. And he had like a little tiny little puppy, you know, and so he was just telling, telling me about that. And he was just saying, he was just basically expressing to me how crazy, like, man, it's just insane just to see the, the refugees coming in mm-hmm. and, and he, and mm-hmm. he's like, sh- like shocked because he yeah. never saw it. You know, mm. you, you hear about it and yeah. you see the news, but the seat right in front of your face was something different for him. Yeah. So if anyone hasn't checked out broker.com slash Ukraine, we got it on the, we got it on the, uh, the stream. There's a link right there. Um, check it out. Help some people out. You can donate money or get yourself something and the proceeds go to charity. And thank, yeah, thank you to Dustin Rogers who just <laughs> dropped ten bucks. So. Thank you, Dustin. Um, Serality is asking: Do you use an artist dummy for reference, or lighting, or foreshortening at all? Uh, I've, I don't use it. Um, I've never, I've never had to use it. Mm. Um, I think it's because most of my training came from the actual professional world. Um, I never went, I, I went to school, but my, my schooling wasn't from, I didn't learn that much from, from schooling. Mm. Um, I kind of felt like, okay, cause I, I think because cause most of the time when I was in school, I was like one of the, 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 be- the better artists in the school. So mm. most of the students would come to me and they want me to help them. How do you do this? How do you fix this? How do you draw that? How do you, you know, help me help help them? And I'm like, I'm trying to do it for myself too. <laughs> but but the, right after college, I was immediately thrown into the professional world. So that became like my second layer of schooling, and then from from there, it just kind of um, you can't help but to uh, produce better art, or it actually toughens you up a little bit because you're or you're in a studio. Um, with a bunch of pro- pro- professional artists and we're constantly drawing and you're learning from each other. So it's not just, oh, you're sitting in a corner. You, you get to see other artists as they're working. You get mm-hmm. to hear feedback, hear criticism, you know, and so you, it inspires you. It gets you to, to like, oh man, I, I need to get, get on, on, the, on my ball here, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, so, so that was part of my, the, the major part of my schooling even even three in three D when I actually switched into um, doing three D three D art and I was learning to animate and everything I was in a studio where there were other artists that was that they were better than me so I didn't learn all this stuff from from going to school I learned a, lo- a lot of my my three D animation and two D animation and just three D modeling and stuff like that from the actual industry from working in an industry looking at other artists in the industry and just uh, getting feed and feedback, going to lunch with them and hanging out, going to their house and emailing them and messaging and then showing them work and getting feedback. And then, you know, it was constantly. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of uh, fun. I'm moving pretty slow and I should be done. Well, I'm this. asking you tons of questions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There's a giant distraction sitting right next to you. So, no. Stop distracting me. <laughs> no, okay. All right, here we go. No, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with... Um, my shading so I'm gonna go through I'm gonna shade a bunch of these, these characters uh, a bunch of areas with you right now okay so so I'm gonna move pretty fast I'm thinking the characters already done okay so now I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna do this costume and I'm gonna do some shading and I'm gonna add more of these spikes in, in time as I'm doing so right now oh, that's too much density on that one. Texture density. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get... Okay. That's better. So I'm not looking for perfection. I'm just looking for a rough sense of where... Where's the light on his body? Where are things going to fall? And I kind of 
make sense of it. Like back here, I know I want a, a kind of shade back here, so I'm just going to quickly scribble that. I'm going to put put his tail in black over here. I think I'm going to I'm going to change a little bit of his designs as I'm doing because I'm f I have something in mind right now I'm envisioning something a little bit different. Okay, so from here now I kind of have a sense of it. So I'm just going to go through and just quickly. Yeah, you're like defining where the shadow shapes are. Yeah. Um, Alexandra's asking, I feel like there's a million ways to lay out a comic page. Mm. How do you decide your page layout? Is there a theory to it? I know some of it is osmosis, but is there a language to it? Um, is there a language to it? Actually, your main goal when you're doing layouts is to tell a story. And you want to tell that story... Um, in a, in a fun, compelling, adventurous, energetic way. Uh, you don't want it to, to, to look too stagnant. You don't want to, um, you don't want to re repeat patterns too much. You want to, you want things to be, you want it to be, almost be like, uh, what is, what is that candy you, you used to put in your mouth? Oh, and like it's pop like, rocks. Pop rocks. <laughs> it's like that. You put, you put it in your mouth and it's like, pop, 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 pop. So there's a lot of things that's happening and you kind of want to have that, that energy going on in, in, in there. It's almost like uh, like like Asian food, you know? Asian foods is like you have a little bit of, of different things and you put them on your mouth and you're like, man, why, why do I have like 17 flavors in my mouth? It's kind of like that, <laughs> you know? So you want to be able to um, uh, uh, tell a story, but tell it in a fun, exciting way. So you're not telling a boring Oh, you're not going to end up with a boring page at the end of the day. You want to have something that's super, uh, that's, that, that, that people can instantly read. And this is key. You should be able to follow along without any dialogue. If you can capture that in your, in your storytelling and you can tell a story without any dialogue, I think you're on a, on, on a, on a good path mm -hmm. to actually being a good storyteller in comics, you know? Um, so just little things to think about you know when you're drawing I hope I answered that question no that's, that's <laughs> an awesome awesome question alright All right, here we go so like I said before I'm not concerned about details I'm just uh, so I'm just going to quickly um, I'm looking for energy why because I'm con I'm I'm, I'm about to jump on the tail end of this and do a lot of um, inking on this. So I'm just mainly concerned about just capturing little patterns right now. Um, Casual Heroes asking, ah. Uh, how was studying under Jim Lee, and what were some of the important things you learned from him? You know what it was like. <laughs> uh, but and, uh, it was like um, it was it was great. You know, um, Jim was um, he even though he was he was my boss, I didn't really picture him as as my boss because he was Jim's only like 10 years older than me so like when, when I first uh came into the studio he was you know he would let me drive his 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 Ferraris and stuff like that wow, <laughs> you know nice. it's like that <laughs> like come on Jim we used to go to Taco Bell and hang out and do all kinds of goofy stuff together so it was it wasn't um it wasn't um I didn't see it like a a a, a boss type of relationship you know it was more like a peer mm -hmm. type of relationship all i knew he was way better than me at the time <laughs> yeah. and and i'm trying to learn from him and i actually i did learn a lot from him because um you know a lot of my art style came it, it actually it's forged into his 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 art style because he would literally show me uh, you know how to how to hold my pencil how to 
how to you know why to do certain things and why not to do certain things you know um so it was uh, i actually learned a lot i learned a lot from, from from jim i was learning from him even before i came into the industry um and then you know, coming into the industry was it was like it was amazing just to actually be there and you know just see him draw a full page of wildcats in front of you and you're like man this is insane how does this guy do this stuff you know oh man when he's drawing zealot and all these things and especially when you see uh scott williams inks right after that it's just like oh man it's like it's like you know to be in the studio when it's actually being done mm -hmm. and it's right there in front of you it's like yeah it's amazing when you first started working with them, was there like a major thing that you had to learn that, you know, maybe in art school was a bad thing that Jim taught you? Um, well, in art, art school didn't teach me how to think big. Art school didn't teach me how to, um, um, how to, I felt like it, it didn't, it, it, it felt like it, it took me from being a novice to a certain point, but not beyond that. Mm. You know, that's kind of how I felt when I graduated school and everything. I, I, I still felt a little bit empty. Um, and then then eventually um, when I started working in the studios, it, it you know, I think it, that helped to, to close the gaps, to fill in all the holes that, that was there. Um, <clears throat> I'd probably say the top thing art school taught me what to do was how to survive, <laughs> how to survive, you know, in this art jungle that, that that's out there, you know? So yeah, it's, it was, uh, it was fun though. It's fun, you know, sitting in the studios working with these guys. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I remember watching like, Fang Zhu a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He'd talk about how, it's like you know you're you're going to school you're, you're you're busting your hump to like get as good as possible so you can get a job or you just, once you start <laughs> making a living as an artist now you're being paid to train and you just exponentially yeah increase in skill exactly because I think that's where like most of the your your training is going to come from is to is on the job training mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, that's why I encourage people out there, even though you're not working in an industry and you're not drawing for a company or, or a commissioner, whoever, create your own project because mm -hmm. that's going to help you um, uh, get a sense of what it is, you know, to, it, what, what does it take to actually have absolutely nothing, come up with a, with a rough format and then finally see, see this through all the way to final development. So, so, just trust me on this. Create your own project. Don't wait for that knock on the door. It's going to say, hey, we want you to come work for us. Don't wait for them. Go out there and go get it. That's what you got to do. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I feel like you're, people are more hyped to work on their own thing. Yep. They'll do a good job on it. And then if it's, you know, maybe if it's not financially successful, at least it's an awesome portfolio yeah, piece. At the end of the day, you're going to have an IP. <laughs> Put it that way. At the end of the day, you have something and you, you're going to try and you're going to fail, but it doesn't matter if you fail because what, what matters is that you go through, you go through and you gain the experience. That's the number one thing you want is experience. Experience will take, will take you far in this industry. Even on your resume, <laughs> you show I have the experience that I did this, I did that, you know. So, uh, Jim is asking, have you seen comics in stereo, uh, like the red blue gr glasses, and what are your thoughts on them? <laughs> um, yeah, I I used to create those <laughs> back oh, in nice. the day. Um, yeah, it's it's been a while since I've since I've done it. Um, I mean, there's, um, you know, technology is change, changing, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's. I kind of feel like like your art needs to change to adapt to that technology, um, you know. So if you don't, you know, you're pretty much going to get left behind or get stuck in the in the in a certain stage where you know um, your 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 art skills just have hasn't improved that much. So. 
Yeah, and I, I've, I know some artists who's done that, where I've, I've worked with them in the past, and then I haven't seen them in 10 years, and then I ran into them, and I'm looking at their art, and they look like they're still drawing from 10 years ago, because mm. they, they just haven't improved, you know? So, you like, you have to draw every day, you have to push yourself, you have to adapt, you have to move with the with the winds, you know, if, if technology is going left, you got to go left, you know, don't fight it, you know, you got to go with it because that's your bread and butter. That's what's going to make you the money in the, in the future. That's what's going to get you to the, the future jobs because you're, you're thinking, you have to think about um, these companies, they're hiring you to, to fill a gap, to fill something they don't have. They don't have a concept artist or a, a, a whatever artist. They don't have an artist to actually do to to do this job, so they need you to come in to fill this in. And those companies are not going to sit around and wait for you know, oh, this is how we did it ten years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, they're gonna they're looking forward to the future, and they're constantly trying to trying 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 to evolve. So you have to evolve with the companies. You have to evolve with the te- technology. You have to stay on on top of things. So that's my recommendation. Yeah, if your style still looks like you know golden age comic, you know, there <laughs> yeah. might be a market for that. There might be a market for it, but it's <laughs> gonna be a limited one. <laughs> you know, you're gonna get stuck with uh, it, it, you know, uh, at Comic Cons for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. So, you know, you want to be able to move around. I'm not saying Comic Cons are bad. I'm just <laughs> saying you know you want to be able to be able to adapt yeah. and and expand it's only going to help your your thinking in the future you know mm-hmm. and dark era is asking do you have any tips on managing learning to draw while also having a full-time job that's not artistic don't sleep don't sleep <laughs> <laughs> don't sleep you gotta you, you gotta uh you know put the toothpick under your eyes and just keep it open like this <laughs> and just keep drawing um <clears throat> Yeah, the thing is that you you want to stay um, just stay active, stay drawing. Um, I used to work for for Sony Sony Entertainment, um, and um, when I was working for Sony during my lunch hour, when I'm working with Sony, I'm sitting there drawing, and during my lunch, you get a lunch, an hour lunch or something. You know, it's, it's it, they're not stringent on on uh, on. It has to be one hour. They just say, hey, just take lunch whenever you want. You know, just be back at a solid time. Mm. So I would go sit in my car and draw again, but I'm drawing pages. Mm. <laughs> so I'm drawing pages for something for, for a different comic over mm. here, this and that, you know, and I'm just having fun. So I'm constantly drawing, constantly doing things. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I like to tell artists don't get caught into doing um, one thing. Uh, if you if you're if you're an artist and you're only drawing one thing, you can only draw in one style. You want to go in one direction. You're pretty much shoehorning yourself. That me, that meaning like your future jobs are limited. If the next company or whoever's going to hire you, they can only hire you to do that one thing. Mm-hmm. Even though you're trying to get really good at it, I'm going to encourage you to be good at everything. You have to be able to expand and. Um, be able to, 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 to move left, move right, go up, go down, you know, switch tools, you know, go, I, I, I can literally drop this right now and pick up clay and do this exact same thing in clay. I can do this right now. If it, it would uh, give me a chisel and, <laughs> and, and some, some, some stone, yeah, that'd be I'm a pretty sure series. I can, <laughs> I can chisel this out if I wanted to, you know? Uh, so you need to be able to move with the winds. Uh, if you don't, you're going to get stuck. You're going to get stagnant, um, you, and you, you're, you're going to limit your, your your future ability to actually. Oh, that's those are horrible right there. Um, you're going to see the, all the undos. Undos. <laughs> you can't do that with a pencil. <laughs> um, so you're going to get stuck, and, you, and I'm going to encourage you not to get stuck, not to 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 put yourself in that that position where you you can only draw one thing for the rest of your life. Okay, so I know there's another pattern that's coming. Hold on, let me. See. I'm just gonna take a really quick uh, look. 
because I have a I have a tiny tiny thumbnail right here. Mm. I'll, I'll uh, use this time to uh, plug our proco.com slash Ukraine if you have not um, checked that out yet. We're doing this stream for charity. So you can get a bunch of stuff. There's courses there. There's action like original artwork, uh, ebooks, things like that. And all those proceeds go to humanitarian efforts in Ukraine. Oh, you know how to get back, right? Okay. That's my that's my tiny assistant over here. <laughs> say hello, tiny assistant. <laughs> she doesn't Shook want to, she doesn't <laughs> want to say hello. She's like, eh. <clears throat> all right. Okay. Now let me think. Do I even like that pattern? All right. I'm gonna change it. Um, different color because I want to be able to look at it separately. So you're designing the costume now? Yeah, I'm not sure if I like that costume though. Let me think about it. Yeah, I don't know if I like it. Let me see. Okay, so I think maybe if I do something like. you had a character with like really flowing robes and things like that would you design the body first and then the f robes afterwards or would you bring those robes into the gesture early on um yeah definitely er early on i would not wait to do it at the end because uh, i'm trying to capture the, the energy of the full character and the costume um depending on what what what, what cost what 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 the costume is but if, if the costume is part of the character, you want to you want to capture that with them, you know, in the initial stages, especially if it's cloth or anything like that. Um, so I don't know. Let me see. Maybe I don't know if I like that one. Hold on. Yeah, someone says naked for life. Naked for <laughs> life. See, probably I'm just trying to cut them. I'll cut something here. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm feeling that one. Let's feel better. I'll give him a neck or something on his neck. Um, um, and someone's asking if this video will be up later. It will be. It'll be on the Proco YouTube channel. Um, and this is this is. Staying up for posterity. We're also working. Someone asked what what uh, program this is. It's this is Clip Studio. Clip, is it Clip Studio Paint? Or Clip, uh, Studio? Clip, Clip Studio Pro. Yeah, it used to be Manga. They, they changed names uh, a few times. Yeah, it used to be Manga Studio. Um, Clip Studio Pro right now. Make it dark over here. Let me see. That feels that feels fine. I might do that. So I'll make that dark. Um, and then, so a lot of these cuts are like standard areas. You know, if you think of a superhero, what do they what do they have? They typically have you know gloves. You know knee pads <laughs> elbow pads mm -hmm. <laughs> you know the standard stuff you know belts and you know stripes and patterns and stuff like that so i'm trying to stick within that that, that realm i don't want to go too far mm -hmm. um and as i'm designing i'm trying to think uh because this is stanley's genesis i'm trying to think of what would stanley mm -hmm. design as he's designing but not stanley from you know 50 Back years day, ago yeah. you know stanley from today how you know what would he he, he uh he think about and so i'm trying to use a little bit of him and a little bit of me and a little bit of just what i i know about the industry uh so it's a combination of a little bit of everything um 
Okay, so I think, I think, what if I make this? Yeah, that will speed me down too. I might just add. Okay. I like the idea of that. Let me see. I really like this brainstorming method where you know it's just a layer on top and you're trying trying out things, seeing if they work. Yeah, I'm looking at some of the patterns now. Some of this might change in the future because um, um, it's there's a process to 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 the character development. I'm gonna throw down the initial stages. Yeah, I'm gonna and I'm gonna take it to final inks, but there's still other people who behind the scenes who needs to see this and they're going to have their input so they're probably going to come back and say hey tweak this tweak that you know move this move that so so you're going to see the initial pro process but the final final piece is probably might be about five ten ten percent difference mm -hmm. um in 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 certain things and then we still have to color them so yeah. there's a lot of stages that's going back and forth um okay i think i like the idea of having um, oh yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, so I don't want to mess with his neck too much, so I'm gonna create a pattern here. All right, so I know he has like, okay. Let me see. Uh, John is asking. When you're learning so many different things, is it more effective to structure your learning and focus completely on one thing at a time? Or should you always be practicing multiple things? Practicing multiple things. So what I did was um, I would learn. I don't have to master it. I just want to get okay. I want to get comfortable with it. So <laughs> once I, I'm, I'm comfortable with it, I don't completely put it aside. I just shift gears and move on to some something else and I'm, I'm learning that and while I'm learning that over there I'm, I'm not neglecting what I just finished learning I'm still mm -hmm. practicing a little bit but I'm, I'm putting mo most of my energy in this direction now so so by the end of the day or by the end of the couple of years uh, uh, um, five six seven years will go by and you're gonna know about six or seven different things within the industry instead mm -hmm. of you're just you've been doing that one thing for the past five, six, seven years. You know, that's that's how you turn into a, an, an artist of one. That's how you turn into a, a self studio. That's how you turn into uh, like a broadband, well versed artist who can go anywhere, go left, right, up down, you can go anywhere on the planet and be able to adapt on, on any art team that you join, jump, jump on any project and you'll understand it. Oh, because I did this eight years ago. I remember doing this, blah, blah, blah. And you just kind of piece it together as you're moving forward. So try to be as versatile as you can. Be with one of those Swiss Army knives. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's, the, that's the mindset you want to have being an artist in this industry is being a swift army knife type of artist where you can jump left jump right to move up move down especially if you're or let's say when you guys are working on a you're working as a concept artist um um for a video game company right um do you think it's best if you're concepting for uh and, and you have no sense of what it's what it's like to build it in 3d or or you, you're concepting with a little bit of sense of what it's like to build it in 3D, because now you're going to know how we you know where to move certain parts, how to move, how to design certain things that's going to fit on a character. So when the 3D artist pick and picks it up, they'll be able to to get it and they'll be able to move move around. Oh, I see what you're talking about because you you've explained it a little bit a little bit more, you know. So you want to be as versatile as possible, um, and just be able to to um, you know. Be be as usable as you can. Mm -hmm. That's basically what you what you want to do. Would you recommend focusing on one skill till you get a job in that thing, or you know, till you're making a living, and then diversify, or diversify early? Um, um or do you have an opinion? <laughs> uh, can, can you say that again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say it again. So. We were talking about, you know, 
d diversifying your skills and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Okay, okay. Um, would you imagine or would you recommend focusing on one skill till you get a job doing that and then diversify or diversify early? I would do that to it as early as possible. Do it early. <laughs> because then you're not, you're, you're not, um, at the end of the time, at the end of the day, it's, it's how much, how much can you pack into that, that day? How much can you pack mm -hmm. into that week? How much can you pack into that month, that year, that 10 years that you, 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 you've spent your time, you know, doing this and you have to have, you have to have the, the, the love for it. Cause if you don't have the passion and the love for it, it's mm -hmm. going to feel like work. Mm -hmm. It's not going to feel like, like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm doing this for fun or mm -hmm. I'm trying to, uh, you know, better my skills or something. It's going to feel like a chore. It's going to feel like work. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend just try to, 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 to do as much as you can within a short amount of time. Um, carry your, your, your sketchbook with you everywhere. I mean, everywhere you go, you go to church, you go to the movies, you go to eat lunch, bring your sketchbook with you. <laughs> okay. And, and just, just keep it with you and just draw, 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 draw as much as possible. Because that's how that's how you're going to get it. Nice. Um, Alexander's asking: Does using photocopy blue as an undersketch still have technical purpose, or is that an old habit? No, it does. It it has a lot of. I'm I'm using the blue right 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 now, but this is the digital. Mm -hmm. But uh, it absolutely does. Uh, um, uh, it's part of. The, men the mental process of do what you need to do to get it done, <laughs> basically. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if, if you can work best on blue line, go for it. You know, uh, uh, I've seen pages, I've seen entire comic books drawn that, that, that way. I've, I've worked in that, that way where um, during, during the COVID times when we, we couldn't physically meet up or, or, or mail art pieces around, uh, I've drawn entire comic books um, on, on, on a board, I had to scan it in, convert it to blue line, or I'd send it to my inker, and then my inker would convert it to blue blue line, and then then he would have to ink it and then scan it in, and send it in, in into the company. So, um, um, yeah, you just have to be be able to adapt and move around. Uh, and if you can if you can do what do an entire book using blue line, I say do it. You know, um, move around as much as you can. Mm. Gonna give him. Right, so I don't want to give him too much. <sighs> Some spikes here. Some spikes there. Not too much. I'm gonna give him some spikes on that shoulder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna speed up a little bit. I'm, I think. How long have we been doing this? Um, we've been about an hour, a little an hour. Over. Okay, so. I should, I should be in the inking stages by now anyway, so I'm going to speed up. So I'm going to make um, now this stuff, all the stuff, I'm, extra pieces I'm doing, I'm not too concerned about. Um, I'm trying to make it look perfect. Right now, I just want to be able to get the, these parts down. Um, Kevster was asking, uh, what would you say is the best way to learn inking without losing all the oomph and energy in the image? Mm. Um, the best way to to learn inking without losing the oomph, meaning the the power, the impact that it has, um, stay. I, I kind of say stay loose, but the staying loose part it really is going to benefit you most in the penciling stages. Um, inking, you're cleaning up the pencil process. You're making it le legible. You're taking um, something that's pretty loose and just kind of tightening it up a little bit. So you have to have good inking techniques and you have to you have to have understand a good light understanding of lighting. Um, you have to have a nice steady hand, know when to pivot on certain certain angles. Um, um, that's 
it, and all that stuff come, comes in time. You're not going to learn any of this stuff here overnight. Um, it's going to take you some time to actually learn all this stuff here. Um, it, I'm kind of stuck on, like, how, how can I really explain it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? How can I really explain it so they can get it without me actually showing it to you? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll show it to you in a minute because I'm about to do some inking right now. Yeah. So you'll see what I'm talking about. I believe we also have that Batman inking demo oh, yeah. coming out. Uh, <laughs> I think in about two weeks. Something in about like two that. weeks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. So there will be a video, extensive video. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There, there was a video we, we did, and it, we ex it, I'm I'm going to explain a lot of the inking process in that video. So. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've watched the Batman penciling video, we go through the inking process, and then Alex Sinclair came in and he colored it. And we printed all of them up, the pencil, the ink, the color, and we have it on our wall in the Proco office. And it's amazing. <laughs> all right. Okay, I think I'm ready to start inking. Nice. I'm going to jump right to the inks. So I'm going to hide this. Um, so I'm going to group everything here. This is grouped. Blue line. start off with the eyes that's just my my thing when you're inking how much are you looking at the or how much are you sticking to the blue line shapes versus like going off on the blue line shapes are just a guide hmm. that's all it is so um, from here, um, I'm just using it as a guide, but I'm, I'm literally re going to recreate everything, but I'll make it look a little bit different. So you'll see at the very end um, what's going to happen to it. Someone named I'm Learning How to Draw is asking, since comic book pencilers use two or three values, should I learn to pencil value scale to learn how to draw comics? Yes. That's an easy one, right? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> that is correct. Correct. Correct the mundo. Oh man, did I just show my age by saying that? <laughs> hey, that's that's still hip. So rad. <laughs> correct the mundo. <laughs> Now you saw you saw how I just cleaned up that line. Mm. Um, to do that in uh, on an actual, actual analog page, sorry, my, my eyes <laughs> me a little bit. Just to clean, just to do that on an actual pen, pen and paper, it, it would have taken a, a lot longer than this. The process would have been just <clears throat> more more intensive because you have to switch tools. Uh, you got to switch ink. <laughs> yeah. Here, if I if I'm if I ink a line like this, and I'm like ah. I'm having issues. I can go back and carve that mm -hmm. like this and just kind of clean it up, you know, like that. So, yeah, your lines feel very intentional and designed. Was there, what was the process of like learning that? Um, or are you still going on that energy mode where you're just like, it's like second nature now? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so basically what I'm, 
what I, the pattern I'm doing is this. I'm doing a pattern like this. Mm. So we go. See how it goes. It, it changes as I'm as I'm moving. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to keep that energy going instead of drawing, keeping everything looking the same, like uh, having uh, like a thin line like that mm. or a thick line like that. I'm changing the pattern, so it it just kind of changes a little bit. So it's a combination of that with a, um, throwing fast lines like this. So when I'm throwing fast lines and I'm, and I get nice thick lines, and one of the cool things about like about Clip Studio, you see how this ink the ink brush has like a nice little uh, texture to it. Mm. It just makes it look like like you're actually inking on actual. <laughs> I, I love Clip Studio. It's one of my <laughs> my favorite programs. I use this every single day for pretty much everything. So this is going to be black in here. And then it People that have questions, they can drop it in the YouTube chat. I'll be monitoring. When you were talking about um, like learning different you know, skills and stuff like that. What are like some of the different skills you currently know that you would consider like a diverse set that people might want to try out? Um, you definitely want to want to get a sense of um, 3D art. Um, that's going to help you understand your 2D art when you when you actually jump back and forth between 2D and 3 3D. That's how I that's how I learned. That's how I put. I, I, I truly learned the fine tuning on um, drawing hands. I always knew how to draw hands, um, but when I started to learn how to build it in 3D, it gave me a completely different per perspective mm. of how am I drawing my hands. And now when I'm drawing my hands, I'm thinking in 3D and I'm thinking, mm. I get it now. Bam. And I just mm. knock it out. Just get it out of the way. No thinking behind it. It just It's just there. You know? So... So that's that's one of the things, uh, um, uh, one of the tools I use, or one of the, the, mm. the paths that I, I go in. Um, you know, it's just like so many different things. Try painting. You know, and when I when I paint, um, it gives me an, another pr pr perspective on whatever I'm trying to draw, whatever I'm trying to um, on my when I'm building something in 3D. Now I'm getting a, a different perspective on it. You know, um, it just helps me with everything what I'm doing. So, you know. All right, here we go. Now, I am doing a strategy that uh, I wouldn't recommend for, um, um, you know, novice inkers out there or anything like that. Because um, I'm kind of moving a little bit fast. Um, and how I'm inking like the interiors and stuff like that before I even get to anything else because um, typically how you want to do it when you, you're inking is that you're inking the contours like this first and then you want to go in towards the interior and ink the stuff on the inside mm -hmm. um, so you just just be careful with that because when you're inking the contours the outsides um, it's gonna help you understand this right it'll help you understand this let me show you uh it'll help you understand this it'll help you understand this head this part of the arm this part of the of the hand you know this part of the vest this part of the shoulder this part of the muscle the, the bicep this part of the hand over here it'll help you understand pieces and segments and then now you're looking at this segment in relation to this segment and in relation to this segment, this segment over here so you can't you have to it helps you understand that a little bit more so if you but if you're inking everything like how i'm doing it now um in a fast way it can throw you off mm -hmm. so i just want to you know 
make that announcement so you're aware that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, so it makes it a lot easier for me to, to just, just jump right into this. But this is not how I would recommend um, inking. Um, Dark Air is asking, when you started sketchy and scribbly, how do you not get lost in all the lines? Mm. I'll often feel overwhelmed with too many lines on the page, mm. not knowing what anything is. Yeah, um, that's something that happens a lot. Um, so what I, it's, it's more of an energy thing. So because I already understand anatomy and I understand uh, lighting, um, I don't mind seeing things scribbly. Um, because I know in my head I'm going to clean it up later on when I'm actually going into um, uh, the, the the final parts, all the finishes. So, so it doesn't. It, to me, it just helps me. It helps me as I'm thinking because, like, uh, like over here, let me show you. Let me show you a good, it's a good example. Okay, like, um, like you see these scribble lines here. It looks. It might look like scribbles, but in my head, I'm seeing muscle parts. So now I'm thinking. Okay, I have to ink this part here maybe I can just make it solid black in there or maybe I can go in and create a tiny highlight in here and then make it black in certain areas you know so it just helps me see it a little bit further out you know like here is this, this the, the armpit here uh, you know so I'm looking and I'm looking at these lines here I'm not gonna follow those lines one to one I'm it's just these lines are just there just to kind of help me understand that, hey, I want some kind of shading in this area. So when, I, when I'm going into doing the final inks, I know I'm going to come back and I'm going to enhance this shape here. And now I have this shape enhanced. Um, and now as I'm inking, I'm, 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 I'm gonna make changes as I'm inking. So I'm not gonna stick one-to-one -to, -one to the pencils. It's more of a guide. So now I know I need to create like those lines don't exist but I'm going to create them and then I'm going to make these lines look a little bit smoother over here on that side um, and if I wanted to I could come back and throw one two three lines over here so if I re really wanted to you don't have to if you, you can tr test it out see if you like it. if you don't like it you can just you know get get rid of it um, you know so it's really up to you as a as an inker uh, what direction you want to go with this. So the thing, the thing about inking is that you're interjecting um, who you are as an artist onto the pencils, you know? So you don't want to be rigid when you're inking anyway. You want to have some flexibility and that's some, something for any p potential inkers out there uh, or, or p potential pencilers out there. You want, just expect expect trust me on this expect your pencils to change <laughs> okay so don't don't be alarmed when you're, you're 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 doing pages and then you turn it in to get inked and then it looks like 50 percent different from from what from what your, your pencils are just expect it you know it's, you're going to save yourself a lot of headaches in the future a lot of arguments a lot of issues um so yeah just just learn to adapt Um, Enyo is asking, uh, if you haven't talked about this, at the pro level, do you sketch plan your characters out by starting with the skeleton? No. <laughs> this, this Primitives, yes. Um, I use primitives all the time. I, I think when I'm 90, I'm still going to be using primitives. I'm never going to stop. Um, uh, but you're using the primitives to just break down the basic shape first. You know, what What am I drawing here? What angle is that that primitive at? And then once you, you have an understanding of, okay, here's this angle, this primitive here, now I'm gonna twist this primitive a little bit more. You get a sense of it. Now you know where, where it's gonna land. And then from there, you, you, can, you also get a sense of lighting because you can look at the lights around you and you can see how that light is affecting this, this primitive and you keep a mental note on it. So now what you're doing, you're just breaking that, down that primitive even more into more details and then you're just adding all the extra textures and stuff like that, keeping in mind that the lighting effects has, has been affected to, has been applied to, to, to this, this, this object. 
you know. So that's basically what you want to do is stick to perimeters. I wouldn't worry too much about the skeleton. The skeleton works. It, it's a combination of both um, laying down the skeleton and the, the, the primitives, but focus more on the primitives. Skeleton is more of like the, 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 the background guide mm -hmm. that's just there to just help you structure and make sure this primitive is in the right position versus that one and you know and stuff like that but then when it, but the, the actual primitive will help you with scale will help you with dimension and depth and lighting and all the all these different parts so you're gonna get mo most of it from actually the actual primitives and not the skeleton part of it. See all these undos, man. You can't, <laughs> you can't do that if you're inking on a board. <laughs> oh man. Um, Dilly is asking, do you have any advice on how to get that traditional feeling when doing digital? Um, uh, practice. <laughs> That's literally it. Re reference and practice. If you want, if you're trying to hit a specific art style or art look or art feel, look at that art and try to hit it. Try to cap, try, try to capture it and try to make it look as close as possible to that 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 artist or the style that you're trying to mimic. Um, that's like the best reference I, I could say because you're only going to get it through trial and error, time and time and tr you know failing, testing it out, looking at it, putting it away for a month, coming back, looking at it again. So I could I think I could do this better and trying again or pushing it or you know actually doing it on an actual project and then getting feedback from other professionals or an audience and then once you get the feedback is it'll help you understand okay where am i going what am i trying to do how am i going to better myself how am i going to improve how am i going to it's 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 just a giant soup it's a giant uh, uh a giant uh dance that giant play that you're working on and it just takes time that's literally it there's no magic pill. <laughs> I wish there was, because if there was, uh, trust me, I would have. I would have so much stuff done. <laughs> yeah. now. Man, I would have all this done in the instant. I would, there's, a, there's a filter to just draw all this for me. Oh, sure, yeah, I could do that. I would rock that filter every day. So I'll, I'll plug our uh, our proco.com slash Ukraine again. Um, basically, we're doing this stream for charity. I'll, uh, if you go to proco.com slash Ukraine, there's a bunch of uh, courses and you know artwork, stuff like that, that you can buy, or you can just straight up donate money, and it all goes to charity. And we have live streams this whole week, and then there's one tomorrow as well. Or there's a bunch tomorrow, <laughs> all day. <laughs> and if you go to proco.com slash Ukraine, you can see what is coming up and all the videos that have already been recorded. Um, Tyler Moss is asking, do you have any recommendations on how to find digital pens on any mm. good digital pens? Um, I just go to, uh, uh, well, in Clip Studio, I'm not sure if they can see the, right. if they can see the, um, if this one they can see. But I, I just go to this, this the Clip Studio hub and I, and I just download, and you, there's a search area and you just go in and you just download as much as, which is you can, whatever you can find. Mm. Um, there are a lot of free brushes on there. There's some paid, paid ones. Um, and then you just get as much as you can out of it. Um, brushes are not hard to find. You can, there's so many like websites and, and forums out there that you can just go in. People are creating brushes all the time and they're just putting it up for sale. Um, so, you know, it's, 
it, it's it, it's fun to, to see what other artists can do but if you actually learn how to create your own brushes that can be fun too you know um and 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 guess what now you have a, a another skill <laughs> that you can yeah. you can take take with you i know how to create brushes you know so yeah just take advantage take advantage Uh, Richard Hall is asking, why do you move around the page so much? Um, because the angle of my hand, uh, the angle of the stroke, um, it's more comfortable. Let me show you. Um, I'm going to hide these so you can see. Uh, but it's more comfortable for me to, um, to ink in one direction like this. If I'm starting to ink in that direction, it starts to get a little bit shaky. If I try inking in that direction, it starts to get shaky. So what I'm gonna do is, since I'm comfortable going in this direction like that, I'm gonna change the angle of whatever, of the page to, to, to fit this direction. So now I'm gonna ink in that direction. Now I'm, gonna, I'm trying to hit the other one. So I'm gonna change and I'm gonna hit go in this direction now like that so I'm constantly pushing or changing the, the page to fit the the angle that I'm more comfortable with okay. don't want to fight it yeah. uh, Michael's asking do you consider tracing to be cheating or would you recommend it to beginners mm. trace I say do it you know whatever it takes to to get you to get you around the, that hump, I say do it because um, um, th I think a lot of fine artists they're going to they're going to say don't trace. You want to be original. Mm. Uh, you want to get uh, you want because you, you're trying to encourage um, free thinking. You're trying to encourage expression, um, and and when it, when you're a fine artist and you copy another artist. It, it's kind of like like you're stepping on my toes, mm. okay. As a production artist, mm. the, the, those things don't don't that that feeling doesn't exist. Uh, production art, you're you're trying to meet a deadline. You have supervisors, you have pipelines, you have you know just just strategies that's that's embedded within within this entire format that you have to. To, to just be able to, to know how to produce, how to move, how to go left, right, up, down. And if copying something, people do it all the time. I've seen people take photographs or pictures and just kind of piece, you know, piece them together and move things around and drag another photo in and then blend it in and move things around. And then it turns into something completely different. You know, it's just, you're just using your tools around you, but at the same time, you're trying to better yourself as an artist. So I would recommend copying, but don't stick to it for, for the rest of your life. Copy, but at in, in time, try to bring in more of who you are as an artist. Because every single one of us, we're all individuals. We all have our own mind, our own, our own expressions, uh, our own story that we want to tell. So tell your story. Tell your story through your art. That's what you want to do. So uh, if you have to copy so you can learn how to tell a story, do it. Copy, learn how to tell, tell a story. And then once you think you have a good sense of it, stop copying. And go, go, just go and just start doing your own thing. You know, start creating your own, your own path, your own avenues, your, your own direction. Um, it's only going to help you in the future because if you're known as a, the artist who's copying constantly, constantly, you're not going to get a lot of work. So you can burn some bridges. You can do some stuff. So you want to have some originality with what you're doing. But as a young artist learning, I absolutely recommend copying. Go for it. Don't don't hold back. Just do what you need to do because you're learning. You're, 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 you're trying to, you know, you, 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 you're, you're, you're still young. And you still need milk. <laughs> you know, the best way I can say it. Yeah. You still need that training. You need someone to hold your hands a little bit as you're going down the road. You know, so so copy as much as possible. 
And people are asking again what what software we're using. It's uh, Clip Studio. Clip Studio. Clip St One. Uh, it's it a pretty good question. It's uh, Renan's asking: As your technique evolved over the years, what would you say is the most significant difference in your own process compared, like now, when compared to when you first started? Um. I'll say my comfort level. Um, before when I first came in, I was I was always fast, but I was fast and sloppy. Um, um, and, and in time, once I had a better understanding of you know what I'm trying to, to my, what I'm trying trying to do um, and my craft and my tools, you, in time you start to, I start to see like I'm fine tuning. I'm, I'm getting better at this and, and I don't need to copy anymore or, or as I'm drawing, I'm, I'm not thinking too much. I think thinking slows down a lot of uh, a lot of artists. Uh, so you don't want to think too much. Um, um, so the less thinking you, you, you can do, I'm trying to increase my tolerance. Oh, I see, because it's a close gap area. Oh, no, it's not. Why is this moving so slow? Or why is this acting weird? Um, I try not to think too much because I try to feel. It's kind of like um, Yoda. <laughs> he was like, don't think, feel. <laughs> you know, that's, that's like yeah, Yoda. Do not try, do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, like that, right? Uh, it, I think when you think, you slow down. It slows you down too much. You want to feel it more than anything. You want to be able to, to uh, get in there, look at what, you know, just get a sense of what you're drawing and what you're doing and just kind of feel your way through it. You know, I've heard someone explain it the other day, but it, it wasn't for art. It was for something else. It was basically getting in your zone. You mm -hmm. meditate and you're, you're blocking out the world and you're locked in this one little zone right here. You're in your zone and you're just going, you're just doing, you're not even thinking of how am I doing this? It's just coming out of you. You know, that's how you want to get into that zone where your mind is just locked on your art and your piece. Some, sometimes I'll turn on music in the background so I, it'll help me get into that, that zone. Sometimes I'll play like mo like movie scores. Mm -hmm. I'm playing and I'm listening to Gladiator uh, and listening to the soundtrack of Gladiator while I'm drawing and it just gets me in that zone of the characters of what I'm drawing, the mood, the world, everything I'm doing. And it, it just it changes everything, you know? So. You have to do what you have to. You have to use your tools around you. Make sure you get into the you, you, the zone that you're trying to get into, um, and and just express yourself. That's the main thing behind it is expressing. Uh, Nicholas is asking, uh, what should I study more to get my proportions and gestures correctly? Mm. Um, that's, that's kind of like an, uh, almost, almost an open credit because, because you can pretty much get it anywhere. I mean, mm. study more, study from real life. If anything, that's what I would do. S try not to study pictures, study from actual real life. Mm. Get a mirror, look, look at yourself in the mirror, pose in that pose that you're trying, trying to get so you can get a sense of where 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 are the stresses on this arm as it's being as you're you're turning in this direction? Is the stress in the shoulder? Is the stress in the elbow? In the in the forearm? In the wrist? What's going on as I'm doing this? Where's my neck? Where's my head? You get a sense of it. You know, you you if you're looking at a picture, you're looking at a two D surface, and you're not really getting a sense of what's going on. So you you're basically limited to just lighting, lighting and shapes. When you're looking at and you actually pose and you're looking at real life and you, you get into that pose, sometimes when I'm drawing and I'm drawing char characters, sometimes I'll sit there and I'll I'll put myself in that pose. Like, what what is this character going to look like? You know, what am I trying to do? How what am what am I doing with his hands? Am I am I is am I just drawing hands or am I drawing hands that's that's going to look like this? So I'll put my hands in that shape so I get a sense of it. Okay, I think I know what the hand is going to look like, and I try to draw it. You know, that's that's how you do it. 
you need to get your mind into that zone or else you're not you're, you're going to be um you know you're, you're going to limit your 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 exposure you're going to limit your uh, you know what your the paths or the avenues or or the the direction that you're trying trying to go go towards don't limit yourself remember this is art art is expression Stop, stop. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> oh, I know why he's doing that. Okay. It's like a different layer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Clip plus you can still capture it. Um, I'm just going to make sure certain things are set. So I just want to make sure. So I'll just do it like that for now. I don't want to go through the settings. I don't have a lot of time. Yeah. I need to get moving. Yeah, we are aiming at probably around like 15 minutes left. Oh, <laughs> well, no. Although we're not, we don't have a hard <laughs> time when we're the no. last, uh, we're the last one of the day. I'm uh, moving too slow. Oh, you, you get, you're answering tons of questions. Tons of questions. Tons that's, of questions. That's what yeah, it is. Loving, it's okay. I'm, I'm here for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So I will answer as many questions as I can as I'm drawing. Um, and I can always finish this later, so mm. this, it's not that big of a deal for me. So the main thing is that you get to see the process and you get to uh, ask questions as I'm doing this um, and gather some information. Learn from other artists. Number one, learn from other artists. In fact, I know I have some students of mine, they're watching this right now, so mm. um, um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching also. Uh, Printora is asking, uh, what is your daily life like being an illustrator? I'm a high school student and I want to get into the art of gaming industry mm. and would like to know your experience. Okay. Um, number one, draw every day, first thing. Um, and start to think in that direction. You want to get into games, so start thinking in that direction of games. That's one part of your thinking. The other part is start thinking on bettering your craft. Meaning you wanna be a concept artist, so start doing more concept art. Just designing stuff, producing, um, looking how, how other people ha have done concept art. Go to Pinterest, that's a great place to go to. So you can just gather a lot, a ton of information, look at how other artists around the world has done stuff, and you can just see it. Because I go there and I'm looking at a lot of stuff and I'm like, oh, you, you can tell that guy's a concept artist, that guy's a gaming concept artist, that's a, a movie concept artist. You can tell just from by looking at it because there's certain art pieces that's out there that's done in certain directions. So just, um, if you focus on bettering your craft and then you, you focus on trying to uh, um, uh, like uh, just get better at just in the in the doing game worlds because when you're concepting uh, art or characters for games you've got to understand blocking you got to understand um, um, uh, anatomy you have to understand um, you know breaking down the characters in certain stages so there, there, there were times when I was concepting, I would do like a blank character just in a pose like this. He's like this in one pose. And now I have this simple shape, but I have to skin that shape in multiple designs. That's one, that's one strategy I would use to get around the hump fast because you need to be able to turn in characters, you know, multiples a, a day. What do you think about this? I just did 13 versions of a character standing like this, but instead I'm drawing all 13, uh, from from scratch, I'm, I have a base model that's drawn like that, and then I'm, all I'm doing is just skinning it 13 times, and that makes it a lot easier. So you start thinking about like strategies like that, because the main thing is you're trying to just nail down uh, a design, and then once you have that design nailed down, then you can change, you can push it into like other directions. Maybe you want they want a front back side, maybe they want uh, they want the character. Uh, uh, doing like a, like an action pose or something now now you can start to play around with it a little bit more it really depends on the studio it depends on the team it depends on the project um you know I, i've done stuff for disney i've done stuff for warner brothers i've done stuff for sony i've done stuff for 
you name it. I've pretty much done like a ton of different things with done a bunch of different companies. Uh, TV shows. I've worked on the Ultimate Spider-Man. I did storyboards where I did concept designs for them. I designed I designed um, uh, Doc Ock. I've, I've done ton, tons of different things. You know, um, so um, it, it really depends. Um, but the main thing is that get your mindset in that direction of what you're trying to hit. If you're trying to be a concept artist, start thinking as a concept artist and start researching concept art. So, because at some point you want to develop your portfolio to look like a concept art piece. Don't think of a, don't think or try to be a comic book artist. If you're trying to be a concept artist, think of a concept, trying to be a concept artist. If you're being a comic book artist, think that you want to be a comic book artist and not a concept artist. So you just have to really feel yourself out and see where things are at, where you're comfortable with, where you're comfortable at. Um, and also, um, um, there are people I know for a fact, there are people who are trying to develop themselves as a concept artist and they're not ready or they're not there yet. And they're kind of spinning in, in a circle. Um, and at the end of the day, they don't have a portfolio or a piece ready to be shown or they're, they're showing and they're not just not getting a job because they're not hitting it. They're not hitting that mark. Um, so you, this is why I'm saying you have to really, really think and put yourself in that mindset of, where am I going? What am I trying to do? And and learn from those people who's done it. There's tons of people out there in, in the world who's done it. They actually show their work on their web pages, on different forums, on Instagram, on Pinterest, or wherever you're going to go to to actually gather um, uh, that, that that information um, and just soak it in and just try to mimic those people. Copy if you have to, mimic them try to get as best as you can and then when you get a sense of it you're like i think i got a sense of this break break away and just kind of do your own thing you know um and um uh there's there's more i can say because I, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see i can talk yeah. <laughs> i like talking too much and my, i need to, i need to draw more than talk stop <laughs> stop talking so much talk so much Brian. Right. Uh, that that's uh, but so good. You know, this is like the, the master class is the, the knowledge that people want to know. Like they can, yeah. you, know, we, we, you know, we can record full videos. We can release what the final stuff is. Yeah, but yeah. getting these like, oh, these questions that have follow-up questions, I oh, think yeah. are really important for yeah. people learning and stuff like that. I don't mind teaching at all. <laughs> I love it. I love teaching. I, I realized uh, once I started, you know, the, my workshop, uh, that I'm like, okay, yeah, I think I like it. I think I like teaching. So. Yeah, we probably have one more question before we wrap things up. Um, I feel like we can, I can ask the question, then we can look at the, Current, you know, the, where the, the I guess the full screen of this, <laughs> the full screen of, and then we can say, hey, where where will people be able to see the final? You know, that that'll be a, a nice little outro transition. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Dala is asking, did you study Bridgman? No. Mm, no. Um, <laughs> Quick, oh no. <laughs> no, no. I um, when I first came into, or before I even came into the industry, when I was in high school, um, I was studying from uh, uh, Bern Ho Hogarth. Oh, Bern Hogarth. Bern, Bern Hogarth was like, well, I didn't study literally from him, but I was. I, I remember going to the art store. I went to an Aaron Brothers, mm -hmm. and I bought a Bern Hogarth book, and I went home, and it became my Bible. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I was studying the heck out of that that thing mm -hmm. uh, it got to the point where I, I was literally tracing him because I really wanted to understand how to, how what is this why is he doing calf muscles like this mm. how why is this why are all his hands looking like <laughs> like this yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know like they're so so stressed yeah. like like that you know like I tried to really understand that you know uh, and I would I remember making photocopies of them and then shrinking them and then light boxing them at different different sizes just so I can look at and understand it, you know, what am I drawing here, you know? Um, so it, it, it took some time for me to, uh, oh, wait, stop, stop, stop. It took some, some time for me to, to, to actually get it. Um, 
but um in but i remember when i first got it i'm like okay yeah i think this guy here he's like this he's a master he knows his stuff i really want to study this guy here and i remember drawing an entire thundercat comic book <laughs> using the burn oh, shapes nice. and feels <laughs> an entire comic book uh, lion o jumping doing this all kinds of crazy yeah. stuff like that oh man that was that was back in the day. Oh, where can we, where can we get this? Is this a <laughs> is this a Kickstarter reward? Oh man, <laughs> no. Oh, I know that would be great if I still had it, but um, I don't have it anymore. It's yeah. I think I think my uh, when I left high school and I left my mom's house, mm -hmm. and went to college. Um, my brother took. <laughs> <laughs> and he threw it in the, the oh, trunk, no. the trunk of my mom's car, and mm -hmm. it stayed in the trunk of my mom's car for like forever. Oh, so he got knocked around and just damaged and everything. <laughs> and then I remember one day looking at it, and I was like, "Why is this in the trunk of my mom's car?" <laughs> and I, I was like, I was, I was kind of bummed out that it got damaged. Uh, so I, yeah. I think I threw it away or something. I don't remember. I, need to so see, I now need to see like a burn hogar <laughs> version of snarf <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it'd be amazing you can see that <laughs> oh man well awesome i i think we're about out of time um i feel like if we uh you know we finish off uh the last bits that you want to but mm. uh you can tell people you know where might this the the finished piece, you know, when people, uh, where might they find that kind of thing? What, oh. are, your, what are your socials? What, what are your websites? Okay, so, um, um, well, first let me talk a little bit more about the, the project. So the game is called Stanley Genesis. Um, it, we are running a Kickstarter for it, uh, coming out in a, in probably September, October time mm -hmm. period, some somewhere around there. Uh, the game will consist of about 200 characters. Uh, I'm, des I'm designing and drawing all 200. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's a process we're, we're going through through the final development. Like we already did the, the box cover and all kinds of stuff. There's actually uh, some stuff that's, that was leaked on bleedingcool.com. So you can go there and go, go check it out. You can see some of the characters that's already designed. Um, you can also follow the game. Um, I think uh, where was the game? I can't remember the link. <laughs> so just just Google Stanley Genesis. Stanley I'm Genesis. pretty sure you'll find it <laughs> if you yeah. Google that. Um, also, um, uh, my 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 personal website, uh, or uh, you can go to RyanBenjamin.com and you can see my personal website. You can also request commissions through and through that. Also, um, uh, my Instagram handle is at RyanBenjamin. You can follow me there. Uh, and I also have a, a, a board game coming out, another board game. I'm in the yeah, board game zone. Board game so I have a I have a board game coming out. A, it's, it's for my my book, uh, which was nominated for an Eisner Award. Um, the it's called Bro Brothers Bond, and that's coming out. Uh, I think we're gonna launch the Kickstarter for that in about three weeks. Don't quote me on that because I know we're still we're in the final stages and so there's a kind of a lot of polishing that's going on with there. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be in a short amount of time. So it's gonna be um, uh, uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. So you, you that one you can actually go to brothersbondthegame.com and you can download a playable version of that game right now as we speak. So go there right now. <laughs> Don't close this window. Just open another window. Just go to brothersbondthegame.com and you can put in your email and you can um, you can download a print and play version of the board game right now. Nice. You can do this. Um, and and also um, uh, uh, Comic Pro Bootcamp, that's another, that's a, that's a studio that I have with, uh, with Will Sportacio, Carlos Diana, and Alex Sinclair, and we teach professional comic book art um, to uh, tons of people around the world. Uh, we've been doing uh, workshops virtually, but we're getting, getting ready to shift into in-person workshops. So you'll be able to come in and you'll be able to learn in person from us right there. I will grab the pencil from your hand <laughs> and I will erase <laughs> your, your mistakes and I'll correct you right then and there. So get ready for that. Um, and, and also, I, I, I just want to thank you guys for even watching us, uh, all the artists that, that, that's been here and we've been... Dem doing art demonstrations and showing you guys stuff 
Uh, the real purpose behind all of this here is to help the people of U Ukraine. Those people are suffering. There, uh, there's people suffering all around the world, but right now, this specifically, we were doing this one for for the people of, U of Ukraine, um, um, and that's it right now. Is from yeah. what I can say. Yeah. yeah, if you want to help out, donate money to humanitarian efforts in Ukraine, we have the links up on the screen. Uh, Proco.com slash Ukraine. I think we have a hashtag artists help Ukraine. There's a lot of people participating. Um, and you know, donate money. You can buy courses there and all mm -hmm. those things go to pr the proceeds. You can buy original artwork there. All that stuff goes, all those proceeds go to uh, Ukrainian refugee stuff as well. Yep. And let, uh, let's get one more one more look at this piece. You want to okay. zoom out all a right, little zoom bit? Out and, a little uh, bit. We can right. end on a like, check this out. <laughs> So yeah, it's still a lot of work. <laughs> this, piece, yeah. uh, this this is this has been an amazing. This is an yeah. awesome piece, and I'm I'm definitely excited. That'll be very cool to see the final. The final. Well, do you think you'll post this on your Instagram? Oh yeah. So where, where do you think we should see this? Uh, in fact, since since we've we've leaked this one here, mm -hmm. I'll post this one when I'm done. I'll post this one on my Instagram, and uh, I'll try to get it uh, uh, posted in some other spots. So. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll announce where it's going to get posted. You'll see it there, and then I'll show you, and I'll also post links to to other places, and it's going to be. I'll probably tweet about it too. So we'll yeah, I'll, I'll ask our publishing squad to also like as the links update. We could probably update the description of this video. Go, yeah, with all that stuff. And, and if you follow Rocket Ship Entertainment, they will have more information about the game. Um, so you can go there and you can check it out um, and see what they're talking about. And I'm pretty sure they're going to post more about this too. So Awesome. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you so much, Ryan. And thank you, everybody, for watching.